when I started college, I'll tell you that my teacher, she said to us, I think there was 12 of us, she said to us, when you go back on the floor when you've graduated, she said, it's not the prisoners you have to watch, it's the staff. And I thought, what? You know what, after being there a year, yep, you're correct. You're correct. G'day everyone. Well, after releasing um, that little story about the Fijian prison officer um, getting away with things with inmates, female inmates that are at the at risk um, section of the prison, um, I had an interesting phone call coming today from uh, a mutual friend of mine. Um, and he put me on to a lovely lady who I'll keep her name out of it. Um, who used to be a prison officer at uh, Papamoa or Paparoa Prison in Auckland. So um, here's a very interesting conversation between her and I. Um, I think uh, it just gives more validity to what's actually going on, to what the uh, Department of Corrections have been sweeping under the carpet for quite some time uh, and shows the culture of what actually happens inside those prisons um let me know what you guys think in the comments so yeah i just saw your videos about talking to arthur taylor about that um pgn on prison officer yeah yeah well i've got a real special friend here and she wants to talk to you <laughs> and this will be an add-on to that video you just put on she's an ex-prison officer who left because of that very fucking reason the corruption is right hello how are you? I'm good. Good, good. I was just thinking about video too, and it absolutely is correct what they do because it happens in the male prison as well with the female officers. What happens is if you see something, that the manager will ask you to report it, right? Mm -hmm. So you see something happening and you go into a manager and you report it, and they just look at you as if you say, don't be not. And nothing happens, nothing gets done. Wow. Nothing gets done at all. And it's like, well, how did that happen? And it's just, I mean, I know. So it just, gets, I it just gets squashed at the manager's level straight away. Yep. Yep. When I, the prison director I had when I was there, he was English. Yeah. We had a personality clash. Yes, you do. <laughs> it got a mad, and it got that bad that I went to another manager mm -hmm. and we did to him, and I went, and I said to him, I'm going to have to leave. I said, because I'm going to tell him. And he goes, you won't do that. I said, watch me. Mm. And you know what? It just, I, I think I stuck it for about another week after that, and I just walked. I couldn't help it. I just, I knew I had to get out, because if I didn't, then I'd be put in bar, behind bars, and I would kill them. So how rice is it in there? Is it like an everyday occurrence, or? Um. Like, how often do you hear about that sort of thing? Like, when I first started there, it was quite regular, mm -hmm. but towards the, but I only worked there for four years in maximum, put them there. Mm -hmm. Towards the end, because we had that new prison built and we moved into there, it wasn't happening so much. Right. But you know, like, I don't know whether you've been to no. Gary. Oh, well, in the old block, in the ABC D box. Mm. It's very, very easy to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> very <laughs> because it's dark, dingy, and the cameras. They all, all the officers know how far the cameras can go. Of course they do. It'd be the first thing. Well, yeah, and Arthur Taylor will tell you that. Because when I, I was listening to the video and I'm thinking, I know that voice, and I'm like, cool. Is that uh, I only going, uh, Arthur Taylor? <laughs> Yeah, well, my mate rang me last night and said, Arthur's got something to tell you, and I went, oh, yeah. And um, then they sent me a link, there's a, another report of another um, prison officer, or ex-prison officer, um, Helena K. Chase, and she's done a report on stuff.co.nz about it, talking about the bullying culture when she's, you know, don't do as you're told, then you get given the shit jobs, or your medical certificates get ignored, or... 
it's, it's interesting that uh, now, now these two prison officers, uh, ex prison officers, saying the exact same stuff. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, I'm female. I'm the sort of person, even out when I'm not on duty, mm. you take me as I am. I don't wear makeup because if I were, like, I'm supposed to have makeup on, I would have been, been born with it on, you know? Mm. We said that one female come in and it was so thick, her foundation. Mm. I used to say to her, have you forgotten where you're working? And she'd just look at me and laugh and walk off. She was English. And all the boys, well, all the boys. You about Englishmen, you can't work a pong too hard. I was actually born in England, but I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm not, and yeah, there are some lazy officers, by the way. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a phrase my father always used to tell me. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's so corrupt. Wow. I think if I'd have stayed there, I would have killed them. I would have. And you know what I did? I was friends with one of the officers in there who was a cook for them, you know, like for the prisoners. Yep. It was on Facebook. And I think it was about eight months after I left, mm -hmm. he messaged me. The cook messaged me and he goes, guess what? And I went, what? And he goes, you know Andy Langley? And I went, yeah. And he goes, he's been asked to leave. And I went, you just made my day. So I found Andy Langley on Facebook, messaged him, and I said, karma's a fucking bitch, isn't it? And I said, you're very lucky I didn't open my mouth about you having prisoners' mothers as friends on Facebook. Yeah, that's... Didn't that's, that's a he did. conflict of interest there, isn't it? Yep, he did. And it's like, ah, Did you... See? Ever, while you were there, did you ever see, a, like, an officer actually getting pulled up for doing something like that? Or was it always just swept under the rug? Always swept under the rug. I think it was who you were in there. It's who you were in there. Like, if you were a new person, a newbie come along, yeah. and they saw you, like, talking too long to a male officer, they'll send another officer along to, along to, to that person and tell them to come away. Right. But if it's someone that's been there for years and years and years and years, and I'll tell you something else about that, so years and years and years, they just turn a blind eye. Wow. Just turn a blind eye. And, like, when I, I think it was about three months before I left, correction were hiring all these newbies. Most of them were young people. And these young people coming in, trying to tell you how to do your job when you've been there how many years? Yeah, exactly. And that's what apparently they were doing. They were hiring a whole lot of new ones to get rid of the old officers. Mm, easily controllable with the young ones, isn't it? Yep. And I tell you, like, I worked with an officer. I can't even remember his name now, but he, he'd been there 40 years. 40 years. Wow. Right. I tell you what, when we were on night shift, he used to, <laughs> there was only me and him on night shift, and all the prisoners were locked in sleep. Right. When we used to go and get our patrols, he used to go and hide in the bushes and then run out of me. <laughs> and then he'd just stand there laughing. And I got him back, I got him back one day and he just got shit and stuff, and it's like, well, don't do it. <laughs> good job. But you know, it is, if you, um, it, it all depends who you are. And how long you've been there for, whether they turned a blind eye or not. And, and is it really sort of like for something as simple as a bit of extra TV time or yard time or... Because, I mean, that lady seemed to be speaking about people in the at-risk unit as well. Yeah, at-risk, they're 24-7 watched. 24-7 watched. So it should never never be happening at the at-risk because there should not be any, any sort of non-watched time for that to even happen in the first place. No, because you know, even when, from when I, because I've been at the Atlas unit watching from this and there, mm. and you have to sit out, like there's cameras to the main bit where the computers are in the middle, oh, yes. but you also have an officer sitting right outside the cell window, looking, 24-7. So it's just it's, it's, so and when the, obviously when the males go to the toilet... More than one officer in on it for that to even be able to, to, to happen. Yep. 
because no no block will have only one officer. How many officers are usually on that looking at at risk unit? There's probably three. Which makes sense because I, I think I heard um Arthur say that he's reported three three officers to corrections to make sure they were immediately stood down from having any contact with female officer, uh, female uh, yep. inmates. There's yeah. normally three. That makes sense, doesn't it? So it does. Means, uh, for one entire, how long does the shift last? I, I know when I did it, they only lasted for nine hours. Yeah, Sometimes so. they went 12 hours. So if you've got those those three guys all in on it together, you've got possible nine hours of hell these inmates are all going through with them all complicit in it. Yep. No. I just... Are you happy, yeah. are you happy yeah. to post a bit of this combo up on, on YouTube? If you want to. Sure. People need to know this shit. I actually, to be honest with you, I feel sorry for my... Um, thank you. I do feel sorry for that prison, you know, that girl. Yeah, what are you saying? Because, like, I know, I know it happens in the male prison with female officers. And it's like... Really? So the, yeah, the female officers are getting the male inmates to get the... They, they used to before the new prison was built, and the old blocks where Arthur Taylor was and all that. In, in before Perry, that, right? the in there. Is that in Perry? Yeah. yeah. But it's like... I, I actually feel sorry because, like, I mean, I obviously work with other officers. Sure. And if they've got a beef with a, like, because I was in the mail prison, if they've got a beef with a certain prisoner, that prisoner goes through shit. Sure. They just go some shit. Every time you walk past the door, you'll get shit thrown at them. Wow. And I mean, some of them, some of them are pretty good. Do you know how you got to look in the window and make sure they're not hanging in there? In there, and you look, you look through the window and you think, oh shit, he's gone. And you've got your torch, and the next minute it'll, be, it'll pop up from the floor because he's giving you a fright. It's like you little shit. <laughs> and then he's laughing his head off, and you just laugh and look away. Wow. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh. Wow, that's just unbelievable. I know. It just gives more credibility to what's going on in there. How come yeah, so, so, so female officers like yourself that have enough, I mean, seeing you've got no sort of um, administrative way to go through it, you, your only option is if you've got any morals or ethics is to leave. That's right. Jesus. And yeah, and I, to be honest with you, that when I was talking about that prison director, I think he was anti-female officers in a male prison anyway. Well, yeah, you get the old boys club still, still rampant in most, yeah. most of those sorts of organisations, isn't it? Because you know how... Yeah. If you got what well, like if you got talking to a male with me being female, next thing you know, there's a rumor going around that you're having an affair. It's like what the hell? With the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Just because you the rumors go around and it's like hello. Yeah. And that's what I used to say to prisoners, to, like like when they used to come up to me when we were in the yard and talk to me, and I you know I'll talk to them for about five ten minutes back. And I'll just say, oh, well, where are you go then? You know? Otherwise, you're up to something with them. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I've got no chance of making any friends with anyone then. Nah. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I didn't know. I'm in there for, I suppose. None of them had, I had no issues with any one of them in there. Not even Graham Burton. And I mean, Graham Burton, I mean, Graham Burton's shared. If any woman comes on this landing, I'm going to kill her. But I didn't have any issues with anybody because I didn't, I drew the line, you know? Like when they were going too far, I drew the line. That's it. Yeah, no more. Put you down to it, yeah. I mean, I'd have a lot of jokes with them, hmm. but once they got carried away, it's like, that, that's enough. That's enough. Hmm. And I, I loved working there. And you know what? When I started college, I'll tell you that my teacher... She said to us, I think there was 12 of us, she said to us, when you go back on the floor when you graduated, she said, it's not the prisoners you have to watch, it's the staff. And I thought, what? You know what, after being there a year, you yep, you're correct. You're correct. Wow. 
that's just really bad, eh? And I, you know, I've seen officers now with me not... What I do now is, because I've left without a job, I thought, what the hell am I going to do now because I'm single? Right. And what the hell am I going to do now? <laughs> so I started my own... been doing it for the last three years, I think it is. It's going all right for you? Yeah, yeah. No stress? <clears throat> nah. And people, look, officers see me in the shop and they'll go, oh, look at you, you're smiling. I mean, yep, I have a life now. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it it's sense just sense like... Whether or not you're, you're working to be happy or you're, you're, you're working under the guise of there's some happiness at the end of it. <laughs> no, no, I said that when I worked at the prison, it used to drain me. And it wasn't the prison of bloody staff and management. And it's like... It's probably the I same for any government organisation. Yeah. I used to do a day shift, go home. It took me an hour to get home. Go home, feed my two dogs. This is what I did as I walked in the door. Feed my two dogs, up for a day shift. Feed my two dogs, grab a Stella, go out to the barbecue table, drink my Stella, have a cigarette, play one game on my phone, go and have a shower bed. That was my life. And then repeat. Yep. <laughs> day after day after day after day. Wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. And now, I don't have that because I can just do whatever I want. And like, I, I don't do shift work. I don't do weekends. You're not in a situation where you can see something like that happen and then have a, a moral issue because no one's no. listening to you, none of that stress. No, I'm on it. I'm up front. If I cock up, I'm, I own up to it. Yeah, you sound pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, that's what the prisoners used to like, eh? Because they'd come up. You're always more like to pin over where you stand with somebody. You know, yep. There's, there's no, they, no fallacy they, on you to be trying to paint. You're just being you. <laughs> they absolutely knew the mood I was in. Like, not with them. Like, if, if I was going to go and stare a prisoner over in the face, oh, yeah because he'd done something wrong, and he knew he'd done something wrong, as soon as I started hitting that way, he'd run away. He'd go, because my body language was going straight over there. Perhaps that's the downside to being so well liked. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they used to give me shit, and I just gave it back, you know, like, jokingly. Of, of course, but you still had that level of what yep. you don't cross, of course. Yeah. Well, but it's not... I never liked the prison direct day started, eh? Because you all go into a briefing in the morning. Yep. And he came in the first day he started and he stood up the front and he goes, Oh, good morning, everybody. And we just went, mm. <laughs> And then he goes, so And he goes, oh, I said good morning. It's like, we're not in a fucking army camp. Yeah, but it's they like, have that authority, don't they? Oh, he, he was... He was such an asshole, mate. Right? I, I, I would have. I would have killed him. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you got out of there and didn't. Otherwise, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. No, and it makes my skin cool just even thinking about him, mate. Because it's like... Yeah, and, fucking... and, would you, and would you have expected to see anything like mine and Arthur's conversation last night on a mainstream media channel? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat it up some of this cool and throw it up there and, um, yeah, get back to me if you like it, or if you don't. Any issues, let me know. Yeah, all good. All right, sweet. Okay. Well, cheers for the convo. No worries. Mm-hmm.